This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We are just about 12 hours away from the semifinals beginning for the 2023 Women's World Cup. We have got Spain taking on Sweden first and then Australia taking on England. We're going to break down both those matches and get you ready for both those matches and take a look at the futures market by talking to Dr. Ed Fang right here today. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sadas. I am a digital media managing editor for FanDuel Research. Joined here as mentioned by Dr. Ed Feng. You can find his work at thepowerrank.com and find him on Twitter at the Power Rank Ed. We're going to talk about Women's World Cup here in a second, but first, you spent the weekend in Vegas out of Bet Bash. How did things go there? Things were great. Bet Bash was a, a great event. Always great to re- renew relationships and uh, make some new ones. And, you know, Spanking team did a great job throwing the event. Uh, and it was out all- there in Vegas, which helps, which just had to be a lot of fun. Yep. Yep, it was good. There, there was an outdoor uh, watch party, swim watch party, uh, but I, you know, it was like a hundred degrees, so I was inside. You weren't uh, roughing it out there. It's it's no, a dry. No, heat, I never even made it up you know, the right? stadium swim. So I mean, it's yeah, I, it's actually not terrible. Yeah, without the humidity, like yeah. it, it can it feels worse in Michigan sometimes with the humidity, but you know. Got to protect my delicate skin from the sun. So sad to stay inside. There are a lot of people at the sports book downstairs. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. I would I would happily choose AC myself personally. I spent a week in the DR. Um, so I've gotten my fair mm. share of like heat in now. I'm ready to just live in air conditioning until we finally get to fall. So I, I'm fully on board with your approach. Just wanted to make sure uh, that we got the, the obligatory, it's a dry heat mentioned in there as well. We're going to talk about uh, everything Women's World Cup here for the semifinals, break down both those matches, and take a look at the futures market to talk about some potential matchups in the final here in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. We are not just talking Women's World Cup, we're also talking some EPL with Austin Cass. He'll be with us on Wednesday this week to break down match week two across the English Premier League. Find that right here on the Covering the Spread podcast feed. Also, over on the FanDuel YouTube page and on FanDuel TV+. Plus. Hit a home run with $5 Dinger Tuesdays on FanDuel Sportsbook. Each Tuesday, all customers will get $5 in bonus bets for every home run hit by both teams when you place a $25 to hit a home run wager on MLB games. And the best part about Dinger Tuesdays is even if your bet loses, FanDuel will pay you $5 for every home run. There's no better place to bet on America's pastime than on America's number one sportsbook. Head over to your FanDuel account or download the FanDuel Sportsbook app to pick your home run hitter. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. Bonus issued is knowledge trouble bonus bets that expire in seven days. Max bonus $25. Restrictions <laughs> apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino, LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Arizona. 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 533-42. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700 or in Kansas, ksgamblinghealth.com. Louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP. In Massachusetts, gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support. In Maryland, mdgamblinghealth.org. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope Y. And in West Virginia, go to 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Now, we're going to dig into these semifinals here in just one second, Ed, but this is our final Women's World Cup show. So I wanted to go back through the event as a whole, and I wanted to ask you about modeling this event out for the first time. You know, what were the big takeaways for you that you want to carry into, I guess, 2027, the next time we get a Women's World Cup? Well, I don't think we need to wait till 2027. I mean, we'll have the Olympics next year. Isn't There'll be another Euro before then. And honestly, like, I think it, it it's... Uh, events that I really want to bet. I think yeah. they're pretty interesting because it's pretty clear to me that like the markets just simply aren't as strong. And that's because no one follows women's soccer, international soccer all year round. I'm, I'm sure someone does out there, but, uh, but you can kind of tell that these markets aren't as strong. And I think there are a lot of opportunities 
in terms of lessons learned on the analytics side, uh, you know, it was pretty clear from the beginning that what I've done for the men isn't useful as useful for the women when there's so many injuries to key players. So it made me kind of dive into some player analysis, which is good and necessary in 2023, whether men, women, or whoever is playing the sport. So I thought that was interesting. And then just from a betting perspective, I really enjoyed it in, in the sense that it was fun to kind of not know anything to maybe knowing a little bit more than the markets. I remember, uh, you know, Matt Metcalf, formerly of Circa, was, was on my podcast and he was talking about betting lacrosse or something he didn't know anything about. And a, a, a book put up some number and he's like, oh, yeah, you know, I'll dig it. I'll, I'll, I'll do a couple hours of work and give you some action on that. And back then I was kind of like, yeah, okay. But, you know, I mean, th that was kind of what it was like for this Women's World Cup. And I think there's a lot of uh, value and opportunity there. And it's part numbers and it's part uh, subjective stuff. And and I think all good betting is a combination of both, right? I mean, it, it literally can be, you know, I think for these types of like lower profile events and just not stuff that there are people uh, that we bet on all the time, I think you can put in a couple hours of work and I think you can do pretty well. And that's an opportunity. Um, you can't do that for the NFL, right? I mean, it, it's much better to uh, lean on someone like me who's been working on a model for like a decade and, and uh, you know, other people who watch every single snap. I mean, that's that's the kind of effort you need to, to beat NFL. Probably not the case with these uh, with these smaller events. Yeah, and I want to talk to you about the player events. level. Go ahead, yeah. Smaller bet events. I don't, I don't want to like disparage right. the Women's World Cup because it is a pretty big event, but in right, terms exactly. of – in it's our specific fear, sphere, it's not a, a sport right. that's as well covered from a, a betting perspective. Exactly. I want to ask you about the player level side of things. You talked about how you want to factor in more player level stuff. Do you think that's something you may factor in more to your men's side of things? Or is your knowledge of the men's game great enough where that may not be as necessary there? Right. I mean, I certainly did factor it into my World Cup analysis, which led me to fade Argentina a lot, which didn't work out so well. I still think it was a pretty good take. My, I mean, I mean, we know how great Messi is and and you, you're seeing that all over your social media feed these yeah. days. I still don't think the rest of that team is very good. I was obviously wrong for the duration of uh, the World Cup. Uh, they played well enough to uh, support uh, Messi to win, win that World Cup. Uh, but but for sure, I mean, we, we do need to we do need to rely on that in 2023. And I will continue to do that in soccer and and, and football and everything else. All right. Well, I'm looking forward to applying that in the very near future. As you mentioned, uh, the Olympics just around the corner. So we get to dive back into this world once again next year as well. But before then, we got to talk about the semifinals, which began actually not too far from now. We got Spain taking on Sweden. That is going to be early Tuesday morning. Right now, this market has been all over the place. Uh, Spain is currently the money line favorite at Wait. minus 188. Sweden's plus 152 about 15 or 20 minutes ago, Ed. Uh, Sweden was down to like plus 138. So they had right. shortened quite a bit. And then apparently Spain took quite a bit of money because it did shift back to minus 188 there. So a lot of action on this market. We've seen some movement towards the under. Currently two and a half goals. Under I think is uh, minus 200 or so, somewhere around there. So movement towards Spain most recently, moving towards the under. I want to talk to you about this game because these are two teams you've been high on this entire event, talking about them in the futures market and stuff like that. How do you see them stacking up against each other here where it is to your favorite teams now having to go head to head? I think Spain's the best team in the tournament. I think I've said that for a long time. Uh, I'm, I'm still not backing off of that. Sweden is very good. They could certainly pull the upset. Uh, but I, I, I just think the Spanish women are on another level. The market movement is amazing. I mean, I'm pretty sure I saw on FanDuel over the weekend, Spain minus 212 to advance. And when I looked at this morning, I think it was one minus 188 this morning. And look, I, I'm betting Spain because I'm hedging out my Sweden future. Right. So I had to do that. And like, I, you know, I ended up getting minus 170 over at uh, DraftKings. I ended up betting it there for because of the better price. And uh, it looks like I caught the, like, the, I think I did that at the perfect time because yeah. it's back to minus 188. It was, was a 20 minute kind of window, I think, where it was minus 170. Oh, great. Well, I got minus 170. So um, I don't necessarily think there's value in that. If you're not hedging out a future, um, I, I can't really. Uh, it was interesting. I did run the numbers on this and they massively favor Sweden. Yeah. Uh, I don't think the the past history of the Spain team can can kind of remotely capture the the level of, of play that they're at right now. But 
Yeah, I mean, I, I expect Spain to move on. I really do think they're the best. Sweden is great. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I do like Spain here. Now, you mentioned how you would not have bet Spain if you weren't hedging out of your Sweden futures. Again, 16 to 1, 25 to 1 on them earlier on from this tournament. If you were looking at this market at plus 152 for Sweden, would that be long enough to tempt you? Or do you think that that properly encapsulates how good Spain is? I think that properly encapsulates it. If it went, I don't know, 160, one set plus 160, 170, maybe that would sure. be interesting for them to advance. Uh, Sweden is good, but uh, I, I, I kind of feel like it's it's kind of spot on. I, I mean, it's it's a, it's at least in the right ballpark. Okay, so that is the money line markets for this event. Any other non money line markets that catch your eye for this game, Ed? Uh, no, no, I not really. I haven't I haven't looked into that too much. Although I do want to talk about uh, a Spain future when we get to that part of the show. Okay, so we'll circle back to that in a second. But first, let's move on to the second semifinal. That is Australia taking on England. This one is early Wednesday morning for us here in the U.S. And currently, Australia plus 124 to qualify for the final, whereas England is minus 152. The total in this game, pretty similar. Over two and a half goals is plus 162. Under is minus 225. So very low scoring game expected once again. Ed, how do you see this one playing out? England versus Australia. For sure. I think this is, there, there's a lot of factors going on here for me. Uh, England's a better team and, and they should be favored. Remember Australia is going to have a uh, home field advantage here. So you, you kind of have to factor that, that in when you kind of just purely look at the numbers uh, you know, it has England around two and three to advance roughly 68, 70% to advance. That is with home field. Uh, this is not the same England team that has produced all those numbers. There's there's definitely some stars that are not there from even when they won Euro last year. Uh, also, uh, when, when you think about England in this tournament, it's really tough to tell. Uh, and partially, like when you look at the XG analysis, we've talked about expected goals. We talk about how it's more predictive than current goals. Uh, but it also has its flaws. And one of its flaws was in the last game against Colombia. Uh, when you, when you simply, when you open up, uh, I, I actually get the, the women's world cup newsletter from FB ref and it's really good because it, it, it kind of tells you the XG for the game, gives you a little synopsis and it tells you the XG on all the goals and you see, Oh, England, uh, 0.85 XG on their goal to score. That is completely false in the sense that, uh, what happened was, uh, the goalkeeper kind of fluffed one and the ball, she could, she the Columbia goalkeeper should have had this ball. She just missed it. The ball squirts out and squirts in behind her and the England player taps it in. Right. So 0.85 XG. Uh, there's in no sense uh, did England create a 0.85 opportunity. Uh, they were probably the better team in the game. But so, you know, when you look at the total XG, if you kind of take out 0.85, it's pretty equal, very low scoring game. And uh, so, yeah, that's not a perfect measure either. When you look at England's XG in this tournament, which actually overall hasn't been particularly good. Um, so, yeah, it's a tough one from from a lot of different angles. Uh, I do not. Uh, I don't know if there's any value in this game. Um, I, I think it's probably priced pretty right. Uh, but but I do think uh, that. OK, so so here's here's kind of my biggest perspective on this. Look, I, I've said that Spain's the best team. I, I went through, I watched England uh, for their last game against Colombia. England's fine. They're not as good as Spain. What the futures market is telling you is that, so Spain is more likely to advance through the semifinals in England, but England is still the favorite slightly, which tells you that if Spain meets England in the final, England's probably going to be favored. And that would be as wrong as favoring Japan over uh, Sweden which we talked about last week. That would be massively wrong in my opinion. So if we do get a Spain versus England final, um, I would jump on it immediately. I think it'll go towards Spain, but you probably, you, you can probably get Spain a positive money to lift the cup. And that would be a really good bet. So they're currently plus 175 to win it all uh, before their game against Sweden. Do you think that match with Sweden is evenly paired enough where you'd rather hold off on betting Spain to win the whole thing, knowing Based on the markets, there's a good likelihood you get, can get Spain at, you know, even money plus one ten somewhere around there to win the whole thing, assuming they do advance. 
Yeah, I'd, I'd probably wait for that. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't see a ton of value here. I mean, I like Spain and Sweden. I think, I mean, Sweden England. I mean, probably same thing for a Sweden England final too. I think, yeah. I think there's probably going to be some value there. I think Sweden's been kind of underrated by the markets this this entire tournament. I think England, if anything, is going to be overrated. Although uh, they will have Lauren James back, uh, so she's the woman that stomped on someone. Uh, in the Nigeria game, she was out against Colombia. She will be out again against Australia. I'm not sure how much of a difference she makes, but um, but yeah, I, I think going against England in a final is probably is, is probably the better uh, bet than 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 this right now. And it sounds like based on the way you view things, where if you get anything on. Spain plus money, like like even money or longer. It sounds like anything to you there would be enticing enough for you to buy in, just because you think that Spain is a better team versus England heads up. Correct? Absolutely. And I and I and it seems like you're going to be able to get plus one twenty, plus one thirty. Sure. Which is 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 a good bet. Okay. Now let's talk about the futures market here quickly too, because you've talked about how you're hedging out against Sweden with the Spain match. And I'm guessing that there are listeners too who listened to you when we had you on the show and talked about taking Sweden futures. Would you be doing so via the futures market? Are you doing so via the Spain match specifically? How are you handling that? I, we, you kind of mentioned what you're, you're, you've done, but what was your thought process in getting there and betting Spain specifically in this match against Sweden in order to hedge a bit on your Sweden futures? It's just that I think Spain's probably going to win this. I mean, yeah. I think they're a the better team. They play a really nice brand of attacking soccer. Um, it was actually the opposite <laughs> against Japan uh, that I talked about on the last show. Uh, Sweden was the underdog. And even though I had those futures, I pretty heavily bet Sweden to advance in that game. There was a ton of pressure, Jim, because I told that to a lot of people at Bet Bash. And there were a lot <laughs> of sports bettors a lot sharper than me that like went and, and bet it. And yeah. so for the first 30 minutes of that game, when it was roughly even, I was like, uh, you know, there was, there was, <laughs> right. just, there was just pressure going on there, uh, but it, it worked itself out luckily that for me. Um, so yeah, I think it's a completely different situation with Spain. I don't know what I'm going to do in the final. Yeah. Uh, should Sweden advance? Uh, I guess I don't have to think about that yet, but uh, I think, uh, yeah, that's kind of my thought process behind that. I mean, it'd be a good problem to have, right? Having to decide what to do with Sweden if they got there. Right. Yeah, it's a good problem to have. All right. Well, that is our final time talking Women's World Cup uh, for this year. But, Ed, next time we talk to you, going to be week zero of college football. Are you ready for college football to be fully back, given you that you actually had kind of a busy summer? Yeah, kind of. Um, yeah, no, I'm, 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 I'm mostly ready. I haven't really looked at too many games yet, but I yeah. will before then. And uh, looking forward to, to getting cranky. Love it. Well, Ed, it's been a delight to talk to Women's World Cup with you throughout this entire event. Uh, it's been a pleasure, as always. Looking forward to talking college football with you as well in the very near future. If people want to find Five Nuggets Saturday, all your other work, where can they do so? Yeah, check out all my work at thepowerrank.com. You can sign up for my free uh, email newsletter where you get Five Nuggets Saturday, which is my curated uh, list of sports betting tips and, and analytics. Also, I'm, I'm kind of on a heater with uh, the podcast right now. Uh, the football analytics show had Bill O'Connelly on last week, had JJ Zacharyson on, uh, and got a couple more really good guests over uh, the upcoming weeks. So check that out wherever you get your podcasts. Yeah, Bill Connolly, JJ Zacharyson. I used my football analytics show mug on Saturday, specifically saw it, and I was like, okay, this is nice. this is the day for this. So what else could you need? Bill Connolly, JJ Zacharyson, me using your mug without telling anybody. I think awesome. that's all you need to that's grow the I podcast. Need. All right, find that on the Football Analytics Show. Check out Ed's work at The Power Rank and find him on Twitter at The Power Rank. I am on Twitter at Jim Sanes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow FanDuel Research at FanDuel Research. We are back once again tomorrow. We'll talk some baseball here on the show. And again, it's MPL coming up on Wednesday. Enjoy the first semifinal coming up tonight. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.